Anybody have anything that they would like to talk about that they were waiting for this meeting so they could bring it up? Um, I do. Go ahead, Kristen. Is there any opportunities to um, like kind of like hook up with an agent and you know help them out with leads? You know, like a bigger agent that maybe is overwhelmed with business. Which office are you in, Kristen? Ridgewood. Ridgewood. Um, go to Sally or Rasham because sometimes there is uh, an experienced agent looking for help because they've got leads that they're just don't have the time to get to. Um, okay. You can also um, go into the MLS and see if there's, um, you know, any new listings that come on and approach that listing agent and say, you know, any chance we could do an open house together, you know, or I could shadow you. Just be very clear on what you expect. You know, if you're shadowing just to observe or do you want to co-host and walk away with half the leads? So just okay. be very clear on that. Okay, thank you. Okay, yeah, and just put the word out, put maybe a message on, on Facebook, Bergen County Partners, and say, is anybody, you know, any listing agent have any leads they're not able to get to? Uh, leads are funny though, if you don't get to them right away, studies have shown that when someone clicks on, when the public clicks on, hey, want more information, they've clicked on three or four other listings that they want information on and whoever gets back to them first. Um, yeah. So sometimes the older leads, but hey, if you ain't got nothing, making a few phone calls and seeing if it comes up with something, just be very clear what the arrangement is with the agent who gives you the leads. Yeah, that's okay. important. Yeah, make sure, yeah. ideally or, in writing, a list yeah. of the, the leads. Or an then, email uh, or a text. Yep, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. And Thank what you. the percentage would be. Okay. And, and for how long? Oh, Roddy got a kiss. <laughs> uh, that was my mom. Uh -huh. Love mom. She came by. Uh -huh. She brought lunch. Uh -huh. uh, how nice. Yeah, her oh, birthday's nice. on the 6th and Mother's Day's uh, this weekend. All right. Wow. Oh, <laughs> somebody forgot. Oh, no. No. No, oh, no, don't, no. Don't let, no. Don't let them down. Sorry, guys. I got to chase the puppy. Okay. Okay. All right. So I was just asking, does anybody have anything they want to discuss? I'm it today. Mary Beth is not feeling up to her normal energetic exciting self she'll be fine i have a question go ahead oh, albert am i saying your name right albert yeah great thank you um i have a question about like lead conversion i've had a difficult time i feel like i have a lot of leads that are just kind of i don't know if they're necessarily dead end or just kind of stick like i don't really I feel like I'm having a difficult time converting them to actually like, you know, moving along the process, even though I met these people at open houses. Is there like, is there like a number of like <laughs> the amount of leads you get that actually convert to action? Oh yeah. Think? Yeah, there are. Like, there are, but you'll, you'll form your own. In fact, I hope you're all keeping track of how many dials it does it take before you have conversations, how many conversations lead to and how many appointments? But that's a really good question. I, I'm not quite sure where in the process I'm hearing that you're stopped. Is it that, do you get to the point that you're um, asking about motivation? Are I'm you even getting to that conversation. I feel like I'm at every stop <laughs> along the way with so many different uh buyers I, I'm not anywhere near listings okay. yet it's just buyers I have people who I met at open houses who wanted to talk to me and aren't answering and then I have people who I met at open houses who wanted to be set up on appointment on like a regular search they want to move along the process and they're just not answering and then I have people who have to move before September before their kids start and they're just they're answering but they're like not really 
engaging. They are not signing the paperwork, but they are answering my texts and emails. So it's like, I feel like I have a different buyer for every train yeah, every, you have every obstruction. along the way. And it's just nothing is picking up. Nothing is converting. And it's like, do I have to get like 20 hot leads before I get one person who's ready to close? Like, I just, I don't know if it's just me or if everyone okay. kind of why. I don't know. That's why I thought I'd just throw it out there and see if uh -huh. the same issues that I'm having. Anybody have any insight, any um, um, collaborate, anybody feel uh, compassion? Uh, for I, I definitely feel similarly. So you're not alone. Just yeah. know that. Same okay. here. And Same how are you here. handling it, and Stella? Go ahead, because how are you guys? You guys all so have the answers. You do. What I'm do. finding is uh, buyers are really afraid to step into this market because they are overpaying. And I have a buyer who um, has purchased before, and he has cash on hand, but he flat out told me, "I don't want to. I don't want to." you know, buy in this market and then in five years find that I'm underwater. So, you know, he's like, I'm used to bidding on a house and always bidding a little bit under. And in this market, we can't do that. We either have to come in at the asking price or over. Um, so um, it's like pulling teeth to, to get them to okay, you know, commit, you know, like, let's, let's start looking at something. And it's really hard for us as agents trying to convince these buyers that they're not going to overpay on a house where in my mind, I'm thinking they're going to be overpaying on these houses. Okay. But, First but of I, all, we've got to change your mindset. We've yeah. got to change your mindset. Yeah. Yeah. Can, Can I, I just ask like that too? I, I feel like they're going to, uh, they're going to overpay. So I've, I've spoken to a few mortgage office, like lending loan officers, and they kind of did a breakdown. And I even like posted a breakdown of it on my social media. So I could forward it to a lot of my buyers saying like, even if you are, if the price of the house is coming up, the interest rates are so low that if it does switch and let's say the price starts coming down, the interest rate's going to go up and then you have less spending power and you're putting more of your money towards the interest payment. So I don't really necessarily feel like people are overpaying. I feel like that's the, like mm -hmm. the trajectory of the prices of the homes, you know, just right. Mm -hmm. roll. That's a good point. Yeah. Albert, there you go. So, but I've been I, telling them that and I don't know. I just feel like. Right. I actually like, did the amortization table with my buyer. So I, I'm just speaking this because this is internal. Yeah. I would never say this to my buyers. Yeah. You know, okay. I, you know. We can, um, we can talk here people. Right. Yeah. Right. So, the, and, and um, so what I did with this buyer who was an accountant, I took out the amortization table and I said, okay, if you take a loan, that's now, a, that's a good match, out, by the way, that's a good match right. of accountant to wanting the details. Right. Good for you. So I explained to him if he bought a house at 500,000 at 3%, which is the going rate now, uh, over the life of his, um, you know, interest uh, over the life of 30 years, he would pay at 3%, like 925,000. Mm -hmm. Then I changed that 3% to 4%. And the life of the amortization of the, the loan would go out to a million something. So I said, so even if you're going to overbid a little on the house, it's, it's a difference of $100,000, that 1%. Wow. So I said, yeah. even if you did overbid like 25,000 to 50,000, you'd still be under if, uh, so either they're going to pay it to the bank or they're going to pay it to the, the right. person selling the right. house. Kind of, that's, that's how I walked him off the ledge. Good, good. Um, another question, and it goes back to motivation, whether it's a buyer or the seller, what's their motivation? And that's where I was going to go with you, Alvar. Um, What's their motivation? What's their time frame? A truly motivated buyer has a deadline. They really have a need with a deadline, a baby on the way, a divorce, somebody moving in, somebody moving out, um, a closing on their current home. They, they've got a deadline. Um, and for those that have less of a deadline, it's if they want to wait 
till the market changes. How many years do you think that's going to take? How many years do you think before we have a market that favors the buyers? Probably, you know? probably a couple. Could be a couple. <laughs> all, all the talking heads who know far more than I say, this market is going to be like this at least this year. And barring anything catastrophic happening, and we did see that last year, we, the COVID was truly catastrophic, and yet it seemed to stimulate our market. Oddly enough. But, pardon me, Ronnie? No, oddly enough, but uh, yeah. I'm in a situation where I'm dealing with buyers that don't want to pay asking. So I tell them I'll, I'll call the agent because I won't even bother going through the offer yet. Call the agent and ask if they've received any offers at mm -hmm. asking. And then I said, well, I'm not going over. I said, well, we can't put in a bid. Then um, what's their motivation, Roddy? Their motivation is to pay as, <laughs> the least amount of money as possible. No, what's the reason they're moving? What's the reason? Uh, moving? More space, more space. How this much more space? How crowded are they? An extra bedroom. One is consolidating two households and another is expanding out for kids that are becoming teenagers, twins that are eventually inseparable now, but eventually they'll be clawing at each other. So they don't have a real time frame, do they? No. Okay, okay. Uh, you can't give them a time frame. you can't. I mean, they're right. adults, they're, they're gonna feel the pressure or they're not. It all goes back to motivation. And then if you're dealing with buyers who do not have that time frame, baby coming, divorce happening, um, current house under the under mar under contract and going to be closing. Then what's the solution for you as a business person? Put them exactly. On the but how do you how do you lead educate gen, them? lead gen, find yeah, more? Absolutely. How do you uh, educate them when they start when we're having that conversation about submitting an offer? You know, they, they think they've got a budget for 450. They want to offer 450 on a 450 list. And I keep telling them that, you know, the 450 is probably going to go for 465, 475. Yeah. yeah. How do and you educate them on that? Um, even the statistics in the MLS, uh, you know, if you go under stats and stats and shows list price, sale price ratios, um, I'm not sure they're catching up. I mean, they're showing that things are going for 101, 102% of list price. Um, but the reality is I'm hearing a lot more than that. All right. The only thing you might be able to do, hey, Roddy, I just <laughs> lost you and I'm answering your question. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, would be to show, literally do some printouts from the MLS showing that houses. Oh, absolutely. I'm sorry houses, about that. No, that's okay. The dog was getting houses, his head stuck in the... Uh, the gate. Well, I would say that's gets priority <laughs> over my telling you what to do. Um, I would go into the MLS and show them next time I meet with them or on a Zoom, whatever you're doing, is showing them some recent and not just one or two, because then they would say it's the exception. Houses that have sold 25, 50,000 more than list price. Uh, and again, I would show them a bunch because two or three isn't going to give the impression. Okay. Anybody else have suggestions? I, I have a, so I have a client who I've been working with and they've been slowly moving them along. This is the fourth offer they were denied on and they've lowered their standards and they put more money towards the house. Um, we were just 13th on the list. The realtor said um, they bid 10% over asking, waived everything except she won't waive um, appraisal. Um, so now she's thinking of dipping into her 401k. My question is, do I use that money so she has a bigger amount of money to put down or do we use it just in case we need to waive the 401k? You mean the appraisal? Um, the appraisal, I mean the appraisal, yeah. I knew where you, where you were going. You know, I, I can't answer that because each seller is going to look at the offer differently. Some sellers and listing agents are going to say, hey, we've got a really good down payment here. You know, I'm, I feel comfortable about that. Or others are just going to look at price. And as long as there's a somewhat l comfortable down payment. So I don't know what to tell you. 
Rosalia. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, sorry. It, Are they really what, motivated? I, they do. Call the listing agent the and ask the listing agent. Say, listen, they can um, accommodate your, your seller in a couple ways. What way would work best for your seller? All right. I, before the next you know market. that the, before you make an offer, you should be calling that listing agent anyway and saying, you know, how many offers do you have? Give me a feel for what's going on. Um, how far over at, you know, certainly ask. They're not supposed to tell, but you can ask, uh, you know, and then just say, you know, my, my buyer can accommodate your seller in many, many ways. One way might be closing date. Um, would your seller yeah, feel more that. Okay, would your seller feel more comfortable with a larger down payment or a higher price? We were qualified okay. that we can handle both the, both of those. That's what I would do. Okay, all right, thank you. You're welcome, did that help? It did, I did, Okay. Thanks. It all goes Hard back market. to motivation, people. And if you don't have motivated, time-constrained buyers and sellers, it, it feels good that you're out on appointments, but it's not feeling as good as it should. And after a while, it starts to wear on you. Um, anybody else? Okay. I have a couple things I wanted to talk to you about. Kind of working in your business versus working on your business. Do you all understand what I mean when I say that? Working in your business versus working on your business? No. Okay, appreciate it. Thanks, Rosalia. Okay, working in your business is actually doing what you're supposed to be doing, buying, selling real estate on behalf of your clients. Working on your business is getting ready to do that. All right, maybe, you know, uh, the majority of you, I think are working with buyers and, um, how good is your buyer presentation? How good is your needs analysis? Do you need to go back to um, maybe an Ignite class or um, maybe look at the needs analysis in Ignite? Um, look at the presentation and command, personalize it. That's working on your business, but not in it. Okay. Um, what else? Well, definitely um, objection handling because a lot of us are faced with that. Uh-huh. And you know, your biggest so. objections are, we've talked about a couple of them and you're saying here with buyers, right, Roddy? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Objection handling, which is script. <laughs> Can I ask with a show of hands and Rosalia, your hand is still up. So I'm going to count you as a yes on this question. Okay. <laughs> How many of you Sorry, are- I'm uh, driving. I know I, that's why I didn't say something sooner. How many of you are on the James Shaw pivot shift class um, session at eight o'clock in the morning? Okay, Sometimes. Jessica said yes. Kristen, you're a yes. Okay, Leslie, I know you do from time to time. I hop on sometimes when I can make it. Yeah, even if it's just, you know, no video, and you mute yourself, but to listen, this is a national call. There's almost 400 people on this call. They are focusing on the shift book, obviously pivot shift. Um, however, lots of cop topics come up, including some of the very things you, you guys are talking about and frustrated about, because this is a national market like I've never seen. All right, so all the different geographic areas are experiencing the same challenges that you are. It's not unique here. Um, how many of you are on, uh, David Radney's mind shift, mind set call? Yeah, Roddy, I see you in the morning. Okay, John, you're on. Who else? Okay, Stella, yes, I see you there, Stella, Jessica. Okay, Nabila. Okay. Um, talk to me about it. What do you walk away with the mindset call? What do you walk away with? Inspiration. Inspiration. Oh, there we go. We're thinking light. <laughs> By the Great way, mindset. do you know how how James Shaw ends his pivot shift calls? He said, now you've had the inspiration, now go do the perspiration. So I encourage you, it should be on your, your daily um, update uh, or schedule. I like class. that. I like that. 
Yeah, you've had your inspiration now. That's James Shaw. And but with David Radney too, you get inspired. You have all these resources. And you know what? You can be a stalker. It's nice if you can contribute. Don't tell David I said that. But I at least would like you to take the first step and get on the call. And it's think, recorded, so you could always play play it back later if you're working. Yeah, yeah. Um, so pivot shift, then your mindset. Um, we have an MREA book club. Did you all know that? Wednesday mornings? Okay. Although we're up to page, oh, I forget at this point, uh, we're up to page maybe 184. It's not too late to hop on. Very experienced agents are on the calls building their business. So that's, it's a really good thing. And I'm going to give you a little heads up that maybe the rest of your market centers don't know about. Bold is coming. Have you all heard of Bold? Roddy, you have? Yeah. Okay, Stella, yeah, you have? Attended it before. You've attended it before? Yeah. I don't okay, know. Do you, you, did you do the um, um, Bold Pivot? Yes. Okay. I'm hearing that wasn't the best presentation. Is that your impression? Uh, I was new, so I was taking it all in. Okay. This is going to be better. And um, it's going to be called Bold Local. And it's going to be the week of June 7th. It will be Mondays from 9 to 12. In fact, as soon as I finish with you guys, um, I have a, a call for planning uh, the Bold Local that will be coming. I encourage you to give it real good thought. You have so many resources available for you. One of which, and this is my passion for the month, is smart plans. Yeah, and I see a show of hands of those of you who have your contacts in command on a CRM called a smart plan. Okay. You can put my hand down. Okay. Uh oh. All right. I would love for all of you to make sure your contacts, all of your contacts are on a smart plan, a CRM, where they hear from you regularly, because I'm going to circle back. There are people in your database, people you know that for one reason or another, you haven't reached out to. They may not know you're in real estate, yada, yada, but they may be having a real estate need with a time frame. And if you're not number one or number two on the top of their mind, as far as being a realtor, you'll not hear from them. And right. one thing with smart plans, you set it and you can forget it. You set them up and um, yeah, because there may be in your database, people with who are highly motivated, they just haven't surfaced yet. All right, they just found out they're pregnant. Let me tell you, one of the things with the lockdown, we're having a baby boom. We're having a baby boom. Yeah, we are. After major snowstorms, after there's a major snowstorm, nine months later, we're having a baby boom. So we are having a baby boom right now because of the lockdown. People were home together. So there are people in your database that may be need that extra room, but actually really need it, like need it now, all right? Because they've got two kids and they're in a one bedroom, okay? Or they've got a two bedroom and, and they've got three kids. Uh, think of your friends who are in condos. Condo is a form of lifestyle. It's a lifestyle choice. For many, it's interpreted as an entry level into the real, into owning a home, all right? So there are people who are in condos who are ready for the single family home because their family needs are growing. And maybe you need to point that out to them. To call them and say, you know, how's it going? You know, with being in the condo during the lockdown, how was it? And find out from them, hey, well, you know, we really could have used a backyard. 
you know, the kids just didn't have enough space. It was, you know, we didn't feel comfortable using the common, uh, you know, common facilities. So, okay. Any questions on smart plans? Where's the best place to learn how to do them? I know we've done so much training that it's probably been in the training, but. Well, uh, good question. Thank you for asking. There's the 66 day challenge. And um, I know um, your tech person in the office must be doing classes on it. Okay. I know in um, the Woodcliffe Lake office, Chris Garaffa is doing a class as we speak, by the way. Um, so if I see any of you don't uh, duck off. Um, every Tuesday at two o'clock, he does a class on smart plans. We did. Uh, that's going to be our focus for now. There was one at one o'clock in, um, in our office in Ridgewood. So Okay, there you go. Mm -hmm. So maybe after this session, you'll look a little more critically and, and look to find when the next one is. Um, and you can put your entire database on uh, a smart plan. And that's Patty, what I, I have a like question. I have a question because I, you know, have not done the smart plans and I'm, that is my goal to start them, especially this week. Um, <laughs> yes. But what I want to know is what would you suggest the best smart plan is if you are initially putting your entire database on a smart plan? Um, I would, if I were you, I would have to take the time. There's a library of smart plans. Right. And look through something that is informative. Now, um, don't forget smart plans sh really shouldn't stand alone. You should be following up with phone calls. And so maybe that phone call will help you decide how to personalize a particular smart plan. But I would go through, there's um, new to real estate smart plans. There's, um, if you have tagged your contacts, either as neighbors, family, hey, you got them from an open house, uh, got them from calling around to somebody else's listing. Um, and then Taylor, you might have three or four or five smart plans. Okay, that you so like. it's case by case, depending on the well, tag and depending on your relationship. Yeah, I don't want you to take too long. It's better to just get a smart plan out there. Um, I'm sure there are pretty generic ones. There are there are a lot in that library. So the general for me to, ones, the neighborhood nurturers are really good. Oh, I love. Thank you for saying that, Kristen. I love the neighborhood nurtures. Yeah. We all like gossip and neighborhood nurtures are like gossip because you can do their town. You don't even have to have their address. You can do their town. You know, you don't need their address to do a neighborhood nurture? Nope, you just need to know their town. Because huh. then you set it up according to town and not according to a specific area. Okay. And you, you do the whole see town. What they look at too, like if they're looking at anything on them. Yep. Yep, it's in the contact page. Yep. And the contact page even lets you know if you haven't contacted them in over 60 days. I've had a couple of those because I use command religiously. I see, uh, Rosalia, you have your hand up. And did I see John, you had I'm your sorry. hand up? I'm sorry, just, I'm just driving. I can't put it down right now. Okay, then I'll ignore you unless you uh, butt in. Okay, yeah. Stella, you have your hand up. Uh, yes, uh, the other smart plan to send out, which um, I find really great, is uh, download my app to, ah. to all your contacts. So, and how many uh, steps are there in that? Is that a multi steps smart plan? I think it's just a, a one time um, smart plan, and it's a whole video, and it's it's pretty cool. So it looks like you're a genius. <laughs> and then your app is attached to like a little button and, you know, so you're asking. So it's easy to set up? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's in the library? Yes, it's in the library. And it's called set, um, what is it called? Download my app. Download my app. Mm -hmm. What was the other letter that someone was um, advocating and got it? quite a few responses. Did anybody do it for about three weeks ago? It's a favor. Oh, oh yes. Can you do me a favor? Okay. Smart plan, but also the golden letter. Yes. Was, what yeah. was the name of that Stella? <clears throat> um, the golden letter is, I didn't find it in the smart plan. It was an actual letter that someone sent out. So I'm trying to figure out how to put it into my um, my email. 
<laughs> excuse me. My go get some water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, go to one of the classes, see if that can be added. Can't you add that as the, an email? One of the email steps? I'm working on that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, go get yeah, some water. Copy and paste and it'll go right in. Okay. Did you hear that, Stella? Uh, how do you, did John say that? Yeah, yeah he said you copy, copy and paste, and paste and it'll go in. And the so emails. You, mm, you copy and paste, you put it into the text with no pictures or anything? Uh, like if you're using yeah. your command emails, I don't know how to do yeah, that. Yeah, the, uh, the, 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 the letter that I saw didn't have any uh, pictures in it. So, uh, uh, so yeah, but you can put it into an email, you can put it into uh, uh, text. Uh, what I would do is put it into, uh, 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 what is it, the uh, Microsoft Notepad, which takes all the, uh, the, uh, uh, all of the formatting out of it and just leaves it as text, and then you can put it into a, a text message, uh, uh, uh -huh. and that'll do the trick. Yeah. So, mm. yeah. Okay. Thank you, John. Also, Thank you. Also, uh, if you want to learn smart plans and you don't know them, uh, there is uh, on YouTube, uh, just go into YouTube and type in 66 day tech challenge and yes. you'll see, uh, I forget who it was who put it up there, but, uh, but there's a lot of stuff in there about how to do it. So. Mm. Okay, Roddy, um, you just posted in the chat. That's the, the email that was um, shared, I guess it was from the uh, James Shaw call. Uh, okay. And somebody shared that on the morning mindset. Yes. Oh, that's a nice one. Hmm. Please, everybody. Wow, that's really nice. So mm -hmm. I just kind of changed it a little bit to make it uh, more personable. Mm -hmm. Okay, everybody, I highly encourage that. That's a great message. That can be, uh, I don't know how big, a, whether it's too long for a text, but you can incorporate parts of that into a smart plan where you create your own smart plan or you um, use somebody else's. But they're going, circling back to how we started. How, where do you find those motivated buyers and sellers? You've got them. How big are your databases? You want to put it in the chat? My database is about 116, I think, at this point. So very small. Okay, 275, Leslie. 350, Stella. Okay. Come on, guys. 500. Um, uh, I'll, let, I'll let you in on a secret. I, I exported all my contacts on LinkedIn. Yay. And filtered out, yeah, filtered out the ones that didn't have emails or phone numbers and then imported them. I um, love that, Roddy. Well, that's a good like idea. Good. And, what, and, and Facebook, how many of you have like, you know, hundreds? Yeah. Even I have hundreds and I don't have many friends. Yeah. So... Okay. I'm Facebook, working on adding LinkedIn, more this I, week. Pardon me? But I'm working on adding more this week. <laughs> really? I love that. How many a day? Um, well, I'm going to try for at least 10 a day. Okay. All right. I love it. Um, what do they say about a database? Build it and then feed it. And what it. Feed it means add to it daily. If you added two people to your database every day, that's 10 a week. At the end of a year, how many have you just added? 500. Seven, yeah. 500, yeah. So two a day sounds very easy. Very easy, very. That, and, and if you have and way more on Facebook, yeah. Good for you, Dan, Daniel. Uh, Dorothy, 125 plus Facebook. Get these people in command, get them on smart plans, and I guarantee, and then you've set up a, a calling schedule. Um, and I guarantee you, you're going to discover the motivated clients with a time frame. I guarantee you. Um, I actually, I have a quick question. This may be very, very simple, but all of my contacts that I've put into commands are by mm -hmm. first name, not last name. Why? Why? Yeah, why? <laughs> I don't know. That's something maybe you reach out to uh, Scott Leroy. Okay. But you should have first and last names. Absolutely. Oh, no, no, no. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm putting in their first and last names 
but uh-huh. it comes like, but the, it's not filtered. I try to, you know, change the filter. It's not filtered by last name. So when it says, you know, today work on your C's and your K's, it's I, every, all the, all of my contacts are by the first name. So it's like all oh, the I A's, see what you're saying. Okay. all the B's um, by, you know, like Abby, Alice. That if, might be rather than doing their last names, which would be an easier way of keeping track. What, um, uh, what you Scott can do Lord. right now is uh, uh, you click on the name. It just on the, on the top of the column is it says name. Mm-hmm. Click on that and then it'll tell you, you can sort it by last name and, and oh, uh, really? the first name. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah, Thank the columns you. do sort. Okay, good. Okay. Thank you, John. <laughs> John's our tech guru today. Woo. I'm going to call John from now on. I know. <laughs> Seriously, John, you want to put your number in the chat? <laughs> <laughs> I've got yeah. his number. Yeah, it's my script partner menu. tomorrow morning. Now that's another thing. Scripts. How are you guys doing with your scripts? Well, I do it every day from 8 to 8.30. So that's why I'm not on the James Shaw call. Okay. All right. Can't you do both? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Can we split you down the middle? Okay. That wouldn't be fair to my script partner. Okay. And then that's, a, and I, that's I, a nice attitude. I like that. Yeah, Nabila and I practice every every day usually. Excellent. And do you go over not only outgoing dialogues for FISBOs, expireds, call around listing, yep. call around sale, right. but objection do, handling? Uh, we sprinkle that in, yes. She's okay, very good excellent. at objection handling. Or at I love least it, giving. Nabila. Love it. Okay. I challenge the rest of you to find a script partner and time that you would not be out on an appointment or in a class. That's why Roddy chose eight in the morning to practice scripts. How many times a week? There you go, Roddy. Okay. What do you think, guys? Hmm. Sounds like a great idea. I'm finding it hard to do. I, I end up working on the computer too much. Uh, yeah. Time block, alone. John. Mm-hmm. Got to take my baby pants off. Uh, I'm getting there. <laughs> yeah. Um, Roddy, how do you do it? Do you have, how do you stick to what you're supposed to do? It's become a habit now. So, um, you know, eight o'clock, fresh minded and everything. And they're great. I have five different partners for each day. So, uh, you know, we, we kind of work on different things and we agree, you know, next week we'll do uh, FISBOs or expired or objections. And uh, then we give each other feedback. It usually takes about 25 minutes. Yeah. And, and it's a no. Um... How are you? What'd you have for dinner? Where'd you go over the weekend? It's no, none of no, that. No, it's like, hi, I'm calling for Nabila Ali. You know, we, we kind of start right off. I love it. Or, or and, John. John does that all the time. He doesn't call me Nabila, but he you know, says hi. <laughs> That's good. So let me ask you, is this in your calendar, your schedule? It is. Yes. And that's why you don't miss it. Mm-hmm. Well, because I'm afraid they're going to yell at me, actually. Yeah, yeah. I don't, you, I, I joke, but I really don't want to let anybody down. So mm-hmm, I want to mm-hmm. do it and I don't want to let someone, uh, you know, disappoint anybody. And then what do you follow it by? A uh, quick five minute break to get ready for mindset. Okay. And then after mindset, what do you do? Lead generation. For how long? Um, depends on the schedule, roughly about uh, two, two to three hours. Can I see a show of hands of people who do that and have it in your calendar? Actively, Jen, for at least an hour and a half to two hours a day. I see one, two, three, four, five hands. I do, but it's not like a, you know, 10 to 12 type of thing. It may be, Mm. you know, maybe a little in the morning and a little at night or, you know, later in the day. So I have to be more mind for that. I, find, I experience has shown that if it's in your calendar and you get that reminder 10 minutes ahead of time, you're more likely to not give in to distractions, computer work, or let me just do this before 
Um, anybody, um, what are some of the thoughts from people I'm not hearing from? I don't want to put anybody on the spot, but I want to hear from those of you who might be struggling with the idea of calling people for two hours. Speak up. Tell me. I'm, I'm okay, not. So I think that's what, awful. What, I've been pretty successful getting into people's houses, but not getting the listing. So I kind of stopped. I'm working with buyers. Um, what you know, happened, uh, Rosalia? What happened? You're, you're taking us a little know. off topic, but that's okay. Let's go. I, I, I brought people with me who experienced and didn't work out. I don't know. Um, so I just don't know. Um, but I can't spend like my hours working on something that's not making money. And I feel like I have people making offers and eventually that will work out. Um, I just, you know, I just felt like I'm not, whatever I'm not doing, I'm not learning by keep on repeating the same thing over and over again. Uh, somebody who's an experienced agent who doesn't work in our office said that maybe I should figure out, work with somebody who teach me how to close, but I don't know where to go for that because I've worked with some experienced they didn't you know, know so yeah if you feel very good with your listing presentation and if you feel that you are working with a motivated seller with a time frame and you're not afraid to ask for the business that's strictly that literally is scripting closing is scripting okay it literally is just asking for the business yeah. <laughs> if they give you a, 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 an objection other than commission, is there any other reason you wouldn't list with me today? And then you go into the commission objection script. It literally is, don't be afraid to just ask, okay, are you ready to start the paperwork? That's a close. And getting them to say little yeses along the way. Does this make sense? Can you see how this would work? Can you see the benefit to that? All these little yeses so that when you get to the big yes, whether it be to buy a home or to list it, are you ready to do the paperwork and get this going so that I can get your house on the market? Okay, I'll try it okay. again. Try it again. Um, and did those houses list with someone else? Honestly, they all uh, stayed uh, for sale by owners. Okay. I, okay. So I, I, I managed to pick every stubborn person in America. <laughs> um, I again, know. I go back to motivation. Um, sometimes when people aren't terribly motivated, they say, you know, let me try it on my own. And because uh, I have nothing to lose, which they do. And um, stay in touch with them. Follow up. Follow up. Dun and Bradstreet said most business is done after the seventh or eighth contact. Okay, so stay in touch. Don't give up. One of these days you're going to come on this call and you're going to say, guess what? You know, those those FISBOs that weren't being listed and that they were giving me. I just listed two of them. All right. So stay in touch with them. Keep them updated on the market. Share your app with them. Be relevant. Give them mortgage information. Put them in touch with our mortgage people. So, you know, one of the things that private sellers have a problem with is discovering whether the person who's interested in their house can financially afford it. So why don't I give you the name of one of our mortgage reps that you can send that buyer to? Okay. Does that help you, Rosalie? I don't want to just paint over your concerns or make no, it seem... It, it, it does. It does. And I do have a Friday morning with Rodney to, and to practice scripts. So I haven't totally given up on my mind. It's just I wanted to... I wanted to just be more active working and um, I have a couple of buyers. So I've been spending my time with them. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of just said I was done. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you really want to continue to work on building your business. Um, and that's lead generation. I just can't bring that home to you enough because that will make the difference when the market shifts as to uh, your survival in the business. When I've managed offices and lots and lots of people over the years. And I could always tell the agents who did not consistently market themselves and uh, prospect. 
by their production was up and down, up and down, up and down. If they had a lot of friends who bought one particular year, they'd have a good year, but they didn't market themselves. They didn't prospect. And so the following year, they it would be a drought and it would be like that for their careers. Not building, just kind of a steady up and down, up and down, up and down. And I'm assuming that one of the reasons you joined Keller Williams is because you wanna build your business, your business. And that takes that consistent prospecting effort every day. Now I see some hands up. I'm gonna say your name wrong or can I, can I just call you Kate? Kate is good. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, so no, regarding Roselia's concern, I'm just, um, I was thinking um, if, you know, she can do some mentor program. Um, and also the reason why I brought up is because um, like a week ago, Mary Beth put me um, in touch with uh, an agent who can help me like really hands-on. Uh, like, so I heard for the first three transactions, um, the agent helped me uh, like A to Z. So I also don't know, like it, that, that is it. Uh, that's it, what I know. And I'm wondering how that is working. And uh, would you share like how, like about the mentor program? Sure. Um, I think there's, we're still footing uh, some of the details, but uh, there is a mentor program. As far as I know, there's um, a referral fee to an experienced agent for three tra non-rental transactions where the agent will literally go on the appointment with you. Okay. And so it is an agreement for three transactions and the agent will be very involved uh, in helping you not only on the appointment, but afterwards and the prep. So that's kind of an overview, but ask um, uh, Mary Beth for a copy of it. Oh, okay. And also I have one more question. Um, sure. So somebody actually contacted me this morning through Instagram. Uh, she lives in South Korea, but she's looking for rent. Uh, she's moving at the end of July. So we found the uh, rent, there's only one available <laughs> rental um, house, uh, but I believe the price is kind of high for that house. Is there a good way for me to sort of negotiate uh, the price? Sure. It's a tough market to do that because don't forget some people who are not buying and extending leases. So it's a tough market for that, but you can. You might want to, if it's um, uh, single family homes or if it's um, a building, um, reach out to some of the other people in the area to see if they'd be interested in renting. Look through expired um Look through leases from like nine, 10 months ago um, and see if those places would be available, whether that tenant is going to renew their lease. Finding the information sometimes is hard you know, to contact the landlord. That's the biggest obstacle. Sometimes through Cole or uh, Vulcan 7, you can get the names of the landlords and just reach out whether they're gonna be renewing with their current tenant or whether they're going to be uh, looking for a new tenant. Okay. Stella, you had your hand up. Yes, I had a simple question on um, the exclusive buyer's agreement. Mm -hmm. um, so the term of the buyer's agreement is it starts, uh, I guess, on the day I send the contract out. And uh, can I know it's normally 30 day, um, sorry, three months, right? Hmm. The buyer's at agreement. least, at least can in I, this kind of a market, I'd make it longer. Okay, so that's what I was going to ask. Can I make it a six month agreement? Because sure, okay. sure. 
I, I wasn't sure if I was limited to three, you know, three months or six months or whatever. Okay. That's you what all I'm know thinking. what an exclusive buyer representation agreement is. Anybody have any questions on that? It's usually limited to a time frame and a geographic area. Mm -hmm. You put zero in for that commission on there. On number five. Mm -hmm. I, I'll be honest, uh, it's been a while since I've looked at one. So I'd be uh, kind of giving you a wild ass guess. Mm -hmm. um, I have two buyers right now, but they're both like friends. So I haven't used it. Mm -hmm. But as a- Well, let me, let me speak to Kristen a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. They're friends, so do you really think they'd go around your back? Um, them, I don't think so. Other ones, okay. I would say maybe. <laughs> All right. Well, use your judgment and use the agreement. Um, I, I would think use your agreement. Go ahead. But you've got to have a, a good value proposition when you're sitting and saying, listen, we're essentially going to get married until we find you a house and you close on it. Uh, and this is what I'm going to bring to the table. And when you sign this agreement, know that you are getting my full services. And in return, I ask for loyalty. I mean, essentially, that's what you say when you are meeting with a buyer. This is what I'm going to do for you. This is how I'm going to do it and how frequently and blah, blah, blah. And in return, I'm asking for your loyalty. The exclusive buyer representation agreement takes it one tiny step further because you've already mentally bound them yeah. and saying, you know, let's just sign here and we'll both have a clear understanding of what to expect from each other. Know that to be perfectly honest, an exclusive buyer representation agreement doesn't have a lot of teeth in the state of New Jersey. Pretty expensive to go after. It creates, it creates a mental set, so. And, and we have to put in 2.5%, right, as our percentage? That was a question I deferred before when uh, Kristen asked. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if it's a, you know, if it would cover you with a for sale by owner, then yeah, you, or if you could get the, the uh, seller to pay your commission. So isn't it normally that the seller pays both mm -hmm. sides of the deal? And, and when I look at contracts, I see uh, like 2.5 to the buyer's agent less like $250. But away. that's been that's been decided in the listing agreement. Mm -hmm. Seller agrees, let's say, for example, a 5% commission, two and a half for the listing side. And the seller agrees, especially in the New Jersey MLS, there's an extra page mm -hmm. devoted to, because there must have been an issue, to mm -hmm. what's the compensation to the age of bringing the buyer. But it's paid for out of the proceeds. The phraseology is that paid out of the proceeds of the sale. So would I be right uh, in telling my buyer, because when he reads this, he's going to say, well, uh, well, time out. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to pay you this 2.5. Would I be safe in telling my buyer normally the seller pays for my fee? Uh, um, but, uh, this it, would it, pay you in case it's a for sale by owner who absolutely refuses to cooperate. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. That that's what I thought. I just wanted to get you know my arms around it. Thank you. Yeah. Ideally, we want to negotiate that and make sure everything. Like if a seller, a for sale by owner agrees to pay you, get that in writing before you show or even give the address. Mm -hmm. And I would also make that arrangement at least three months. Right. The single and showing, the single showing, make that at least three months. I actually sold it for sale by owner and um, you have to give them an exclusive right to show, I guess. Um, so there's a form when you walk into the for sale by owner, you have them sign and, and they agree to pay you the percentage mm -hmm. if, if your buyer buys their house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I had an authorization to show. Authorization yeah. to show. Is that, that what it is? Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, get that signed before you bring your buyer over. Absolutely. Yeah, because I'd be surprised if they have the form at the house. And if they do, then they're working with a realtor. Yeah. 
because that's an MLS form. Okay. Has anyone had any luck getting buyers to sign the agreement? I mean, I've had one out of um, four so far. All my buyers have signed an agreement. <laughs> well, you're you tough. So, Rosalia. But I can't keep able to sign the listing agreement. <laughs> I'm a buyer's agent, I decided. Uh. <laughs> All right, well, what's your secret sauce for getting them to sign the exclusive buyer representation agreement? She I take them out them with me, I show time. them what I have, and I said, if you want to keep on working with me, you have to commit to me as much as I commit to you. Huh? There you Very go, good. I like that. I'm going to take like it. it, Rosalia. Repeat it, Rosalia. I take them out, I show them how hard I work for them, and I tell them, if you want me to continue to work with you, you have to commit to me as much as I commit to you. It's so honest, it, I think that's really just, I feel like it's so true that it mm -hmm. doesn't come out as a sales mm -hmm. pitch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love it. It's obviously very much you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Did that help? Okay, believe it or not, we're coming up to our hour. I hope you found this helpful and useful. Absolutely, thank you all. Thank you. I, you guys bring so much Thank to the table. You. you are an extremely talented group. Please take advantage of all the support that's out there for you. Um, I hope to see you on Pivot Shift and Mindset and the MREA book and um, Bold. Keep your ears and knowing that uh, pretty soon they're going to be announcing and I'll be getting on a call in three minutes. So. All Thanks, right. Patty. Thank, thank you all. Thank Take you. care. Thank, thank you. you. Patty. Bye. 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 Bye.